real gases and the van der Waals equation. Okay, so now we've spent a lot of time talking about ideal gases. Okay, so now we just need to talk a little bit about real gases. So basically, what are they? Most gases behave ideally when they're held at low pressures and high temperatures. Okay, and so, you know, it's really rather remarkable that so many gases will have a range of conditions where they behave as ideal gases. Now, for our purposes, room temperature is usually considered high temperature, okay? And then remember also that ideal behavior means that the gas molecules don't interact with each other. So only kinetic energy is present, no potential energy. Okay, but sometimes gas molecules do interact with each other, okay? And so under certain conditions, it's more likely. One is very low temperatures, and another is high gas pressures or high gas densities. So a lot of gas in a small space. And so basically this introduces some potential energy into the picture. All right, Gas molecules start to know that each other is there. They start to feel each other's presence. Now some molecules have significant intermolecular attractions. All right, So this hasn't been covered yet, but there are molecules that have areas of partial positive and partial negative charge, so we call these polar molecules. And these guys are electrostatically attracted to each other, so it's a little bit like those ionic compounds, except now we're just dealing with areas of a little bit of excess positive charge and a little bit of excess negative charge. And so these partial charges with opposite sign are attracted to each other. And that introduces potential energy into the equation. So energy of position, so how close these guys are to each other, the closer they are, the more they can feel each other's presence. Now water is a polar molecule, so we're going to use this example in this discussion of real gases. Now, if we want to detect deviations of a gas from ideal behavior, we can use something called the compressibility factor. Okay. And so you can just see the Z looks an awful lot like the ideal gas law. So pressure times volume divided by moles times R times T. Okay? And when Z is less than 1, then intermolecular attractions exist. Okay? So when Z is lower than 1, then gas molecules can actually kind of feel each other's presence. Okay? So they, they know each other is there. There's potential energy in the picture. Okay, so let's look at three scenarios for gases in a piston. Okay, so we're going to use a piston so that we can increase the pressure easily. All right, here's our first scenario. Okay, so at low pressure, we just have a gas, you know, comfortably in the container with a low pressure. All right, and under these circumstances, under these, you know, conditions, then the actual volume taken up by the gas is what we would get if we use the ideal gas law to calculate it. Okay? So in a low pressure scenario, then the ideal gas law and the kinetic theory of gases are obeyed. Okay? Now the picture starts to change when we decrease the volume. So we're going to increase the pressure on this thing. We're going to squeeze those molecules together to a medium to high pressure and as this volume decreases, some molecules are going to stick together. Okay, so we can see some of them kind of stuck together. And this effectively reduces the moles of gas. All right, and now the actual volume taken up by those gas molecules is lower than we would get if we use the ideal gas law to calculate the volume. Okay, so in this case, we would say the gas is more compressible and attractions dominate. So this is where Z would be less than 1, okay? So this is where attractions dominate. You can think of attractions where, you know, molecules are so attracted to each other that they might even stick together, okay? Now, if we go to a ridiculously high pressure, okay, so like completely ridiculous, so now we've taken up all of the excess volume, squeezed the piston down as absolutely far as we can, and the gas can't move around, and we can finally see that it actually does take up space, okay? And that's something our common sense might tell us, that, you know, with the ideal gas law, we make the assumption that the gas molecules don't take up any of that space in there, but they actually do, 
And when you put a high enough pressure on them and squeeze them close enough together, there is a point where you just can't squeeze it all the way to the bottom. You can't make the volume zero, okay? And so these gas molecules do actually take up space. Now the actual volume, all right, so in here, is higher than what we would get with the ideal gas law. And so what we say at these really high pressures is that repulsions dominate, okay? So in, in this scenario, at really high pressure, repulsions are in charge. So molecules are repelled by each other basically because they each have a certain volume that they have to take up, okay? So now let's come back to this compressibility factor, all right? So here's the graphical view instead of the piston scenario view, okay? So here's Z, and when Z is equal to 1, that's perfectly ideal gas behavior, okay? So that's perfect ideal gas behavior, okay? And we have three gases in our system here. And our first one, we can see that under these conditions of relatively low pressure, see, pressure in atmospheres, we're going to increase it. Under relatively low pressure, this gas does basically behave ideally, okay? So this, this is what we would call an ideal gas. Now, even ideal gases, if we keep on increasing the pressure far enough, then repulsions are going to start to dominate, okay? So when Z is larger than 1, then repulsions are dominating. So in other words, the molecules really are taking up space, which we already knew that, but this just demonstrates it, okay? Now, these other two curves are for real gases, okay? So we're going to start at low pressure. As we squeeze these molecules close together, then they start being attracted to each other, okay? So both of these two gases have a Z lower than 1, you know, kind of around this pressure right here, okay? And when Z is less than 1, or in this well, then we would say that attractions dominate, all right? So in this intermediate pressure for these real gases, attractions are dominating, where if we look up here at our ideal gas, then this guy is still behaving ideally, okay? Now notice our real gases, at low enough pressure, they behaved ideally also, okay? But as we increase the pressure, then they start to be attracted to each other, and Z is less than 1. Now, again, if we keep on increasing the pressure, then our real gases enter the range of conditions where repulsions dominate, where the molecules really do take up space. Okay? Now this is the most interesting effect, okay? And, and so usually this is what we focus on. This part, you know, it doesn't make a big difference in the behavior until you get to really, really high pressures, okay? So the, the volume that the gas molecules take up is not the big part of this story. It's these attractive interactions that changes the gas from an ideal gas behavior to real gas behavior. Now, there are numerous equations, models, for real gases, okay? And so one of them is the Van der Waals equation, all right? And the Van der Waals equation corrects the ideal gas law for real gas behavior, okay? So we've solved for pressure here, and the Van der Waals equation has the moles times R times T divided by, here's the volume of the container, minus this term NB. Okay, so we'll talk about what that means in a minute. And then subtracted from all of that is A times N squared, okay, over V squared. Now, the Van der Waals equation uses two constants that are experimentally determined for each individual gas. Okay, so for, for water vapor, for sulfur trioxide, for oxygen, for nitrogen, there are Van der Waals constants, A and B, that have been experimentally determined, all right? Now, Van der Waals constant A describes the strength of the attractions, okay? And then here are the units, all right? So that just makes it so that everything cancels out. Um, so the Van der Waals constant A describes the strength of attractions. So the larger the A, the more attractions the gas molecules feel for each other. Now, the Van der Waals constant B increases with increasing molecular size, okay? So it has to do 
with those repulsive interactions from the molecules actually taking up space. Okay, so we can look at this equation and see it as a correction of the ideal gas law. And so here's the correction. So here's the total volume of the container, and then here's the amount taken up by the molecules, okay, the gas molecules. And that uses Van der Waals constant B. And then this whole term, this is the pressure that's subtracted off because the gas molecules are attracted to each other, okay? So the actual pressure that is measured is reduced by this amount when we compare it to what we would get just calculating it using the ideal gas law. Okay, so let's do a few conceptual practice problems, okay? So we're going to predict the relative size of the Van der Waals constants A and B for the following gases, okay? So the first one is hydrogen gas, which is really small and not polar. Okay, so in other words, it's not, it doesn't have areas of partially positive and partially negative charge on it. Okay, and then sulfur dioxide, which has larger atoms and is polar. Okay, and so let's go ahead and think about what, how, or predict how large, relatively speaking, A and B would be for each one of these two gases. Okay, now, since hydrogen gas is very small and not polar, we would expect A to be small, that's the level of intermolecular attractions, and the size obviously is very small, so B would be small. So the Van der Waals constants A and B would both be larger for sulfur dioxide, okay? They're larger atoms, sulfur and oxygen are larger atoms, that's a larger molecule, and then it is polar, okay? Now, let's compare two other gases, okay? And these guys are roughly the same molecular weight, not exactly, but which would produce the lowest pressure? So if we're assuming that the moles of gas, the temperature, and the volume are constant, okay? So they're both the same for both of these two systems. So the first one is methane, CH4, and this is a small molecule that isn't polar, okay? And of course, we already saw water, water vapor, and of course, these are also small molecules, but they are polar, okay? So predict the sizes of A and B, and then predict which would produce the lowest pressure. Okay, so if methane is a small molecule and not polar, that means that A and B are both pretty small. And if we go and we look these up, then we find out that basically, yeah, this is a pretty small A, and so that's a relatively small amount of intermolecular attraction correction. And then B, of course, is pretty small because it's a relatively small molecule, okay? And water is also a small molecule, okay? Now B should be, you know, something similar, not exactly the same, but something similar to methane, and it is. So if we look it up, then there's the Van der Waals constant B for water. Now, the big difference is going to come in with the Van der Waals constant A. Because water is polar and it can hydrogen bond, which is something you'll talk about in the intermolecular attractions unit, then A is 5.46 compared to 2.25, okay? So we can see that these attractions are quite a bit stronger. So if we were to put in A here, same number of moles, same volume, then this subtracted component of the pressure is going to be larger for water than it would be for methane, okay? And so that means the pressure exerted by water will be lower than the ideal pressure, okay? So methane would give us a close to ideal answer, and then water would have a lower pressure than, a significantly lower pressure than we would predict. Okay, so let's just summarize this, all right? So the big difference between real gases and ideal gases is that real gases interact with each other and they do actually take up volume. So remember in the ideal gas law, the gas molecules do not interact with each other and we assume that they don't take up any space. All right, now the Van der Waals equation corrects the ideal gas law for real gas behavior, okay? And it does this through these constants A and B, which we've discussed, okay? So all we're doing is correcting the, real, the ideal gas law for real gas behavior, and if indeed the gas is behaving ideally, okay, so let's say we did have an ideal gas, then 
the Van der Waal equation just reduces to the ideal gas law, which is PB equals nRT. So if you make A and B zero, then you, you're right back at the ideal gas law.